Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful. First of all, I want to say fantastic for the young people that they're doing an excellent, excellent job. As he said, I'm Marzia Hashimi. I just want to say a little bit about my life. You know, on December 20th, I turned 59 years old. And I reflect about my life and the journey that Allah has taken me during this almost six decades of living. I go back to being born in New Orleans. I go back, way back, for many of you. And I remember when I was in first grade. When I was in first grade, I went to an all-black school because that's the way it was in New Orleans in that area in Louisiana during that time. First grade, all-black school. Second grade, they decided to integrate. So my mother, being the revolutionary person that she was, very strong mother and father, decided, she said, you're going to go to the all-white school. Her friends were, it was still too early for them. They wanted to wait and see as far as reactions, but my mother, no, absolutely not. She felt that that was where the best education was going to be held. Thus, I was going to go. I go to an all-white school, which is from first grade to eighth grade. I'm in second grade. Second grade, everyone else is white. All of a sudden, one day over the PA system, the principal says, teachers, get a black and white count. Now remember, I was the only black kid in this school from one through eight. So in my classroom, my teacher says, everybody stand up, except Melanie, which was my name before I became Muslim. So everyone's standing up. And you know, I'm an eight-year-old kid, and everyone else gets to stand, and I'm sitting. Anyway. That story stays with me many, many years later. But however, coming from the strong parents that I have come from, both mother and father, fortunately, they always taught me several things. One, as a black American in this country, you will have to work very hard, twice as hard to get half as far. And you never let anyone, never let anyone stop you from what you are capable of. Always believe in yourself. So we go forward. Many experiences during this time of various racist approaches, practices that fortunately I overcame. I go off to the university many years later. All white university, probably 1% black. And I was told many things that I shouldn't be there, but yet I was able to excel. And then, of course, 1979, the actual revolution that revolutionized myself took place. On the other side of the world, changed my life forever. However, there are some things that I had learned prior to that, and then others that I brought to the table after I became Muslim in 1982. First and foremost, lessons that I have learned in my life that helps me all the time. Number one, have a call. Always believe. Always believe in the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you want to talk about having your back? You really, really believe that he is there. He is there. And really, he has your back. Two, be consistent, be persistent, never give up. Don't allow negativity, negative people, to affect you and your goal. Work hard. Work hard. It is the only way. And foremost, be humble. Be humble as a Muslim. Understand your role in all of this and understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest and our biggest role in this world is to serve him and create the best situation that we can in this world. You know, I have taken a lot of tools with me along the way. There's been a lot of controversy, a lot of people who said that I couldn't, that I wouldn't, that I shouldn't. But alhamdulillah, with the help of Allah, um, overall, I think I've done okay.
But the main point in this, and I, I really want our young people to understand, because a lot of times our young people may be told that you can't, it's not time for you to do that, be careful, especially in this society, you gotta watch what you do. And I'm here to tell the young people, you have that faith in Allah, and you know what Allah expects of you, and you do it, and you do it well, okay? Believe in yourself, believe in your ability, and fine tune your skills. Be the best that you can be. We we're talking, we we're listening to some of the uh, presentations today, talking about akhlaq. Well, confidence too is very important, especially in the Muslim in this society. For me, actually, when I became Muslim, because of coming from a background of being black in the United States, and of course, coming from a society that was very repressive and oppressive in dealing with black Americans, however, that actually equipped me equipped me for later on becoming a Muslim, becoming a Shia in this same society. There are many of my sisters who, white Americans, when they became Muslim and became, they, they put on hijab, it was very difficult for them because they had never faced discrimination. They had never faced hardships. Don't be afraid of challenges. Don't be afraid of hardships. It's through the hardship that we actually make ourselves this is a very important lesson. To concentrate, to focus, have no fear, because Allah is great and he's there. I've had many challenges, many ups and downs throughout my life. At one point in time, I felt I'm okay, I have great support system, wonderful mother, wonderful father, fantastic husband. 18 months, that's all it took to lose those three vital individuals in my life. 18 months to have your life upside down, and it's like, okay, what now? But actually, in the long run, we look at it and we see that it was that time that when physically you may not have someone as far as that support system, that's when you go deep. And you understand, actually, our real support is only him and always. It goes back to that tawakkul and concentrating on the real entity who can help us 24-7. And this is important to differentiate. We have parents, we have spouses, we have kids, we have friends, we have neighbors, alhamdulillah. The only entity, the only entity that you can count on 24-7 from now until you die is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just remember that. You know, it doesn't mean that parents don't love you, Kids don't love you, spouses don't love you. Each person comes with his or her limitations. So don't expect too much. But pressure yourself. Pressure yourself to be the best that you can be. I've had to start my life over many times. So this situation happens with my family. My oldest son, 17, my daughter, 14, a uh, young son at that time, seven, and here I am, what should I do? What should I do right now? Again, came back to the U.S. because my oldest son was here, starting life all over again. Starting life all over again. But it's okay, because if you have the tools, if you are well equipped, and also flexibility is very important in life, you're going to get through those challenges. Though they may be difficult, though you may shed tears, but there's laughter along the way. But just remember that ultimate goal. That ultimate goal is submitting to Allah, again, doing the best that you can to change the status quo and to make this a better place. And of course, the ultimate goal, as we know, is to help provide the way to bring on the zuhur of Imam Zaman. So this is what you have to keep in the framework, the bigger picture. That's our goal. That is our goal, whether we're talking about as individuals, as communities. What can we do? What can we do to bring on 
the zuhur. You know, when we major, when we work, when we study, we have to always remember our ultimate responsibility. What can we do to help in that way? And we have to concentrate, we have to focus. Life is very, very short, and you never know what's going to happen. Always expect the unexpected. I remember one week on a Thursday, I went out with my husband and my kids, and we went to Dor Komel, and we went out, and we had a great time in Tehran. And the next Thursday, I was in my husband's hospital room in Denver, Colorado, after his accident, saying goodbye. That's life. That's life in this world. Actually, right before I came down tonight in the room, I was looking at the latest news. There was a tsunami yesterday in Indonesia. So there's this video that there's this pop concert. So there's this concert, everyone's singing, it's just wild and crazy music. They're listening to it, the band sings, they play the last note, the water comes in and wipe them away. That's life. So every second, every minute, everything that we do, be conscious of that. that this could be my last breath. This could be my last second in this world. Do I want to leave this world in the state that I'm in right now or not? Be careful, be careful what you do, where you do it, where you go, who do you hang out with, what do you see, what do you talk about? Be very, very careful because you won't get the second back. It's gone. Move on. That's how fast-paced life is. One other important lesson. Never get hopeless. Where there is a law, there is always hope. Never forget that. No matter how difficult the situation may be, sometimes you feel like the, everything is tightening around you. Understand that there is always hope. You know, almost 40 years now, we go back to what happened inside of the Islamic Republic of Iran. I remember, right after the revolution, no one thought that it would make it to the first year, or very few. And over here in the media, every day, it's going to fall, it's going to fall, it's going to fall. Ayatollah Khomeini is dying. It is finished. First year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year, seventh year, eighth year, ninth year, tenth year, Imam dies. It's finished. The revolution's over. They won't last a day with Imam Khomeini. Many people were worried. But I'm telling you, you have faith, you be persistent, you be consistent. And Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, on February 11th, of 2019, there will be, there will be a commemoration and a celebration of the 40th anniversary of the revolution of Iran. And let me tell you something, that is no easy feat. That is no easy feat. Everything has been thrown at Iran. But you can't give up. Many, many problems, many problems, yes, that we have. But you know what? We're going to make it. And this is a lesson for all of us about never giving up, having the tenacity, and also continue to try to improve to make it better. So never forget that your main goal in life is to do whatever you can to bring on the zuhur of Imam Zaman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.